Here is something that might not happen very often, I hope, and who knows in the future might be allowed to do it. And that would be installing a tread in the wrong direction. So most of the time, the grain of the wood will need to go in this direction and not in this direction here. And I think about the easiest way I could suggest to fix something like this would be to remove the treads that are installed incorrectly and replace them with a tread that will be installed with the grain going in the right direction. And I would also like to suggest that you check with your local building authorities before using the next two repair methods. And the second one on the list will be to nail, staple, or screw the back of the riser to the tread to prevent the tread from moving. And I would suggest pre-drilling any holes for your nails or screws because plywood and OSB can split. And if I had my choice, I would use the crown staples. And if you have a three quarter inch riser then you might be able to use an inch and a half staple and maybe put about eight or ten of them in here or install a two by four block underneath the back of the tread like we have here and you could toe nail the block into the stringer or end nail it through the stringer into the block to provide you with what I would assume to be enough structural support for this repair and then nail the back of the tread into the blocks and you might want to use some adhesive and you would put the adhesive on the blocks before sliding them into position and again if an inspector catches this and requests a repair then make sure that you get one from the job architect designer or engineer and another tip i'd like to throw out there longer blocks maybe a 2 by 8 2 by 10 might work better if you're having a difficult time nailing a 2 by 4 and let's not forget that this will add additional weight to the stairway, which again takes us back to my first suggestion for this type of a repair, which would be simply removing the one installed incorrectly and then installing the next one correctly. One of the biggest problems you're going to have reusing old stair stringers will be the fact that the lumber shrinks. And I've seen a 2x12 shrink up to 3 8 of an inch before off of the width. And there's a high probability that that's what's going to happen to your existing stair stringers, especially if they're located outside. Inside stair stringers shrink also. And the cause of the shrinking is usually going to be from the moisture inside the lumber evaporating out of it and this is going to cause a variety of irregularities depending upon the lumber now if you have dry lumber you're working with dry lumber this might not be a problem so I'm not about to suggest that something like this is going to happen all the time but it does happen often enough for you to be aware of it and again it's the irregularities it might not shrink over here it's going to shrink here shrink here not over here not over here and you might have a big knot over here that's causing the lumber to deform and this could include twisting warping and curving the lumber so you could be dealing with a stair stringer that would be curving up or one that would be curving down in the center and is no longer straight so let's just say you have a nice piece of lumber and it shrinks the exact same dimension all the way around the stair stringer. Again, another thing that's not going to be real common but possible, then you might be able to reuse that one. But you're going to have to add some shims in a variety of different locations, including the top and the bottom. And that might look something like this, but again, this might not provide you with the best results. And if there are any irregularities, you're probably going to have to add shims. And by the time you finish doing all of this, you probably would have been better off just making a new stair stringer. And the main reason why most people aren't going to lay out a new stair stringer is because it's not that simple to do. I get it. Just make sure that before you use the old stair stringer as a pattern that you measure each step and that would be in this direction and in this direction all the way up to make sure that you don't have any wacky variations in it that are going to create building code issues. You are allowed to have up to 3 eighths of an inch maximum variation between steps but I'm not going to go into that. I have another video on that at our website and you can get to it by by clicking on the design tab and then the building code tab 
and then the stair building code link to check out a variety of other building code issues you could have already with your existing stair stringer. So there you have it. I've never used an existing stair stringer as a pattern because of what I just said in the video. However, I also understand that I know how to make a new one and I will leave it up to you as to whether or not you need to learn how to make one also. Here is another question that popped up on my channel. The individual wanted to know how longer treads, longer steps affect the width of a stair stringer. And I see this a lot. Someone has a short stair stringer, maybe three or four steps, and they cut it out of a two by 10 or they purchase a pre-cut stair stringer that would have been cut out of a two by 10. And that would be nine and a half inches from here to the tip when you would lay out the stair stringer if you laid it out in a conventional and standard method. Now, here's a two by 10 stair stringer with a seven and three quarter inch riser and an 11 inch tread. And it has about a three and an eighth inch, three and a quarter inch. We used to call this the meat of the stair stringer. You know, this isn't very much. This is less than a two by four. And I'm not suggesting that this set of stairs will ever fall apart. And of course, you could always nail a some support boards underneath it, like some wall framing studs, or you could add a two by four or a two by six to the side of it kind of a thing to reinforce it. However, that won't be necessary if you use a two by 12. And here you're gonna have about five and an eighth of an inch. Now, five inches seems like that's plenty of lumber to um, use it for the structural strength. Three inches, uh, that's just probably not gonna cut it, especially on a longer set of stairs with no support braces underneath it. Now you can always design these stairs accordingly. If you're going to be using supports underneath them, or if you are going to have some type of supports that you are going to attach to the side of them, and then it's not going to be a problem. So I don't want to just sit, throw it out there and say, hey, wait a minute, you got to use two by 12. It's going to depend upon the design of the stairway. But by now you're starting to get the picture here, 11 inch tread, seven and three quarter inch riser, two by 12. This is how much meat we got left on the stringer. Two by 14 is going to be even larger. And I don't think this is necessary for a small set of stairs. But if you're going to be using a longer stringer, something that's going to be 10 to, let's just say 16, 20 foot long, something like that. And this is definitely going to help you, especially if you don't have a lot of supports bracing, wall framing studs for the stairway. So you're just going to have a freestanding stairway with 14 steps on it. 2 by 14 is probably going to create a nice structurally strong stairway. Now here's where the problem starts to happen. Instead of having an 11 inch tread, we have a 13 inch stair tread, one foot, one inch stair tread. Now we're going to have six inches. If this was a two by 12, we would have four inches. If it was a two by 10, we would have two inches. Not going to make us, not going to make the structural engineer or the property owner happy. And if we add two inches to the step again, making it a 14 inch, a 15 inch stair step, I mean, 15 inch step, seven and three quarter inch riser. Now we're down to four and 13 sixteenths, which would be about four and three quarters, four and seven eighths, something like that here. And this still might be acceptable depending upon the length of the stair stringer and the design of the stairway. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap the video up right here because I don't see any other need to go longer and have this measurement go smaller. I think by now you get the picture of how a longer stair step, a um, stair tread that is going to be deeper in depth is going to create problems for your structural stair stringer. So longer steps are probably going to require larger stringers. And thanks for watching. Also, don't forget to visit our website. We have an organized list of our videos there. You might have a difficult time finding that anywhere else.